Okay, so um, first you introduce yourself, all right? And you can say what is September the uh, whatever, what is today? What is today? 16th? 15th. 15th, right? 2016, yeah. right? Yeah. And where you're in Philadelphia. But then um, we want to we want to reflect back about you. You remember your your grandparents at all? Anything about your grandparents? Your Not names? Really? All right. Well, we'll just. Well, I, I have a little history. Okay. All right. So we'll, why don't you hold the microphone closer like this? And keep yeah, it no, below. Where, where but, do you want the microphone? Like that. Do you want like it, this? Uh, yes. Not too close. No, you don't have to be that close. That's good. Okay. All right. Okay. Go ahead and start now. I'm Sam Crane, and this is September the 15th, 2016. Right. And we're in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. on the 19th floor of a building. This mm -hmm. is our condo. And uh, we're going to go into some of our family history. Uh, my nephew, my eldest nephew, Fred, is here, a mere six years younger than me. Sure. <laughs> but uh, uh, all right, so it should be interesting to some people. Some of this information was put together by my sister Gloria and her family, and I think they, they did a good job. So I'm relating some of this that, that they put together, too. Alrighty, well, beginning in the old country, my father, Morris Crane, was born in 1890, supposedly in Cherishawa, Russia, although there are many different little towns that they that he ascribes his origin to, and it's, it's totally confusing. But most of the legal papers say Shereshova, Russia, which was actually on the Russia-Poland border. And it was in a state called Grudna, and it was not far from Bialystok. And uh, let's see, so at that time, uh, it was felt it was part actually of Poland, uh, he came to the U.S. when he just turned 17. He arrived in the port of Philadelphia from Liverpool, England, aboard a ship called the Friesland on May 26, 1907. He went to live with an aunt and an uncle. I'm not sure of the name. It may have been the Kleins, however. He became a citizen in 1913 at the age of 23. In the meantime, his father, going back to the old country, had been a blacksmith. His mother owned a tavern. His father, his name was Mendel, was struck by lightning and killed one day during a storm. Uh, before, how, how, how old was he? Do you know when his father died? Uh, it was before Mars came to the U.S., so I think he was like a teenager, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, and Morris was born in what, 18, what year? He was born in 1890. Okay. And... Uh, when was his mother born? Do you remember? No? no, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, how much, uh, was she younger than... Uh, I believe she was a little younger than mm -hmm. his father, yes, yeah. Uh, when he was born, he was never registered with the government as being uh, a citizen because he was, they were afraid he would go into the Tsar's army. And the, the Jewish kids usually were sent to the army for 20 years if they survived. They were usually on the front lines and they're usually the first to be killed. So consequently, to avoid this, they never registered him and they knew that he would have to leave Russia eventually to go to a place like the United States, hopefully when he was a teenager. Now, uh, my mother, Fanny Crane, her maiden name was Rosenberg. She was born in 1897. Again, we have another, a little town, which is confusing. It's called Pruskov on uh, the papers, and yet, and it's near Odessa, supposedly, although, uh, 
talking to her, it sounded like the town was closer to uh, the Bialystok area, but it was confusing. She came by ship from Antwerp, Belgium, aboard the ship called the Switzerland, a landlocked country called the Switzerland ship. And she arrived at the port of Philadelphia on December 23rd, uh, I don't have the, it looks like 1906, with her parents, Sam and Anna Rosenberg. Now, Anna Rosenberg, her mother was the only grandparent I ever met because her father passed away before I was born and I was named after him, Sam. And my father's parents uh, were killed in the Holocaust and I, I never met them. Now, we have a picture taken in 1915 of Morris and Fanny when they became engaged. Morris was 25, Fanny was 18. Now, when get, just getting back to your father's parents, uh, did they have any brothers or sisters that you uh, know about? I believe they did, yeah. And now uh, my, my father had a brother. You know what his name was? His name, he had several brothers. The only one that reached the United States was Jacob. Mm -hmm. Now, my father's, when he came to the United States, got off the ship, they asked him what his name was. He said, Karain or whatever and they gave him K-R-A-I-N. My father's brother, Jacob, came a few years later. He got off the ship. They asked him his name, and somehow they derived a name K-R-A-N-E. My father's uncle came a few years later. What was his name? His name was Benny, and he became C-R-A-N-E. So there were three different cranes spellings in Philadelphia from people coming off the ship and telling the uh, supervisors you know, their name and they kind of put it into English. Yeah, so that's a, that was the story. So, so you, you, mentioned, you mentioned that uh, we can, that's okay, yeah. we can get the paint here. There's another paper there. You mentioned uh, that your, your grandparents, your father's parents, were killed in the Holocaust. Is that, is that what you, you said? My father's father was a blacksmith right, and he, he was, was killed. hit by lightning. Right. My father's mother, as far as we know, was killed in the Holocaust. And her name was? Her name, I don't remember what her name was. I yeah, never so met it's your her. grandmother. Yeah. Your grandfather. Right, never met her. And uh, there you were a lot of relatives that were mm -hmm. killed in the Holocaust. Do you know, they, but they lived in, in, in Russia at this point, right? They lived right on the border mm -hmm. of Russia and Poland. So you don't have any idea whether settlement. it was, whether it was uh, what, anything happened to them at all, as far as whether they, uh, were, were they living? This 30 years later after, they le after your father left. If, if, you know, it came like many years. What happened to them at all as far as their lives? We really, mm -hmm. really didn't know much of anything. My parents did not like to talk about the old country. Mm -hmm. Now actually, my wife Joyce, her mother also came from the old country. Mm -hmm. She, my wife's mother, saw her mother being killed by the Cossacks during a pogrom mm -hmm. in the Pale of Settlement in the Russia-Poland mm -hmm. border. So they, uh, her mother witnessed the, some of these atrocities. Mm -hmm. So uh, now getting back to your, um, your parents met in Philadelphia? Correct. Where were they, where did they, where were, so I think they, they met at a cousin's So house. your father, who was your father living with? I think he may have been living with the Kleins. Mm -hmm. That's the they concept? had a store on Marshall Street, I believe, a women's wear store mm -hmm. on Marshall Street. So what, do you think there was any relation to the Kleins? It was an appliance store? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Hold the microphone down a little bit lower. A little lower. Oh, That's it. Yeah, sure. So your father, went, when he came to the United States, who did he, he went to live with a cousin. Correct. And he came by himself. Correct. So what happened? Now, what would, did he have any kind of a profession when he came here? 
On the ship coming to the United States, mm -hmm. he learned how to become a tailor. And he practiced that profession for the rest of his life. Mm. Tailoring and, of course, cleaning, you know. Well, it's like my father-in-law, he learned to become a barber on the ship coming over to the and United And his name States. was? His name was Albert Holland. Mm -hmm. And his son became a neurosurgeon. Mm -hmm. So you but went he from a barber <laughs> to a neurosurgeon. But he became a barber on the way over. On the way over. Okay, so now your father, he gets to the United States. Does he uh, go to work as a tailor or what happened? Yeah, like a cutter, called mm -hmm. a cutter. And he went to work where? This is elementary tailoring where he cuts out Did the Did he work forms. for a company? Worked for a company in downtown Philadelphia. You know the name of the company? No, I don't know. I don't okay. know the name of the company. And then, and then, and then, how long did he stay to doing that? Did I he, think maybe around ten years, and then he eventually went into business. And that was when? Oh, uh, that's a good, good question. Where, I where, think where, where, where was it? On G Street. Uh, so the home that you were born in. That's, that's right. Where, okay. Yeah. Now, actually, they lived originally. When they got married, they lived. Uh, on Greenwich Street in South Philadelphia, between Six and Seventh Street. All right, so do you know anything about your when your how your parents met? Did a I friend think at a cousin's it? house. Did a friend uh, just they just met socially at someone's home? I think so. So where was your mother living when she came over? She came with with her mother. You said she came with her mother and father. Mother and father. Yeah. Okay. And I think they were living. Where did Separately. You, know where, you know where they lived initially? They, she never went into it originally. Mm -hmm. I think she lived with her parents, the, mm -hmm. the small home, in South, probably in South Philadelphia. And what did what did her uh, father do? Her father, I think, was also like a tailor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about where he lived? What, no. he, where he, who he worked for? No. The mother lived Not at home, right? Yes. Uh, so how yeah. many? So now your father, your father has, uh, he comes over here, a brother came later Correct. on? Jacob, also, he was also in the tailoring Did he business. live with, with, did he live with him when he came no. over? No, uh, well, I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. And as far as your mother. You have to remember, I am the youngest right. of five children. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, so much of this occurred in the, you know, 1910, 1920. Right. And I'm born 16 years later, you know. So your father, your, mo your mother is living, uh, does she have any sisters or brothers at this point? Yes, she had uh, a number of, she had two brothers and I think three sisters. Did they, they were born here? They came, they came over, you know where they were born? I don't know. I don't were know they younger or older than her? I think uh, some were older, some were Do you have any of their names? Sure. Uh, there was Benny. Mm -hmm. There was Regina. So Regina is much younger than your yes, mother. Yes, Regina was mm -hmm. the youngest. Mm -hmm. uh, Benny, Regina, uh, Charlie. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlie became a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, we are friendly with his daughter. Mm -hmm. Uh, who was a psychologist. Her cousin, what's her name? Naomi, Naomi. Rosenberg. Okay. Montgomery. Mm -hmm. She's married to a very nice psychiatrist by the name of DeWitt Montgomery. Okay, and, and then you had, there was another daughter, you said? Yeah, then there's a Molly. Mm -hmm. Molly also. Mm -hmm. she, uh, she married a Max Langerman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there were, there were a number of... So uh, now your parents... Your parents are living uh, in G Street. Is this where uh, your oldest brother was born? Milton? Milton was the know. oldest. I don't know. That's a good question. So uh, Milton is born in like... So in far in, before me. Well, Milton is born in like 19, what, 13, 14? Do you recall? Uh, I have some figures. Let's see some things here. Okay. I believe Milton was born around... 1915. Right, here's the oldest son. He's the oldest son. Right. Right. And then, and then the next person to be born? And then the next person is Gertrude. 
And she was born. She in, was born, I think, two years about, almost to the date. Nineteen seventy. After after Milton. And then the nineteen seventy. And the next. Then there was Lillian. Right. She, I believe, was born in nineteen thirty. So that would be around thirteen years after Gertrude. Mm -hmm. And then. Then Gloria was born, I think, approximately three years younger. Uh, later than uh, Lillian, mm -hmm. so that would have been about 1933, mm -hmm. and I was born approximately three years after Gloria, and that was 1936. Okay, so there was a... Now, uh, most of us lived at 3449 G Street, mm -hmm. and that's where my father had mm -hmm. his tailor shop. Now, that home, was that, did it have central heating? Was it a modern home? Did it have central heating? Do you know? I believe it did. What it had, I remember, we used to get coal delivered periodically. Mm -hmm. There was a door on the, on the ground in mm -hmm. front of the house. We'd open it up and the coal man would come and unload coal. Mm -hmm. And then we had this heater that we put the coal into to heat the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was, it's, it was central heating. Right. No such thing as central air conditioning. No. We had maybe a, an air conditioner box, you know, unit in, in a window here or there. But, but that, was, that was in the 1950s. Not, yeah, yeah, that was, I think it was in, in my parents' bedroom, which was on the second floor. Now, as far as plumbing is concerned, as far as, you know, uh, um, indoor plumbing? I think there was an outhouse behind but that subsequently became indoor plumbing mm -hmm. so do you do uh, since you were born do you remember having to go outside to use the bathroom not or was really. it always indoors not, it was always indoors mm -hmm. and it was always on the second floor mm -hmm. i mean my goodness the idea of having to go up to the second floor now every mm -hmm. time you have to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. is terrible now but mm -hmm. That was a luxury that we had in those days. What about as far as hot water to take a bath? Did you have? In, in yeah, again, uh, it was the water through the heater, through the central heating. Mm -hmm. The the water was diverted, mm -hmm. and you had hot water. To so take you don't a remember bath. ever. Having of course, my father always said that you should never waste water mm -hmm. because water is very expensive, and consequently, I always took very fast baths. And <laughs> How about now? And showers. How about now? Now the same thing. I'm the out. only one in my family that takes a fast shower <laughs> <laughs> because I've been well trained. And my father had the, his favorite breakfast every six days a week was slices of rye bread with slabs of butter in it and tomatoes and onions. However, on Sunday morning, we had a delicacy. We had lox and onions. Not lox, eggs and onions, right. but lox and onions. Fro cold fried lox. When's the last time Joyce made that for you? Or has she ever made it has for she's you? She's never made it. <laughs> I've made it. <laughs> I've made it. I've let Karen make it, but I, I'm afraid she's either going to burn the onions, <laughs> not soak the lox enough, or, uh, you know, whatever. You could always tell Sunday morning because you woke up and you smelled yeah. the sautéed onions yeah. and it was wonderful. In, home. In your home. In our home. See, I remember that sandwich, but it was not with butter, but maybe it was. Maybe I changed it. I put mayonnaise on it, but maybe it was your, mayonnaise? maybe, maybe, no. maybe it was butter. Maybe I had some butter. very poor friends in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They were called the hula hands. Mm -hmm. Everybody in our neighborhood was either Irish or German. Mm -hmm. no, no Jews. You know, and I was friendly with the Houlihan boys. And they were very poor, and their favorite sandwich were two slices of white bread with mayonnaise and sugar inside. That's what that's what they could wow, afford. Wow, that is poor. <laughs> I remember your father when he would slice the bread. One size was like an inch, and the other one was like a quarter of an inch. That's right. It was yeah. never. It wasn't yeah, thin. Yeah. Um, well, also, but we eventually advanced. And we got a brand new electric range and oven. And I'll never forget, it was around Christmas time. And my sister Gloria and I said, wouldn't it be nice if we hung up stockings on the range 
where the handle was. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did Christmas Eve. We hung up the stockings. And on Christmas morning, we came down and there were pieces of coal in the stockings. <laughs> <laughs> Who put them in there, your father? My father. <laughs> How many years did you do that? Just the one year? Just that one year. <laughs> we, we learned our lesson <laughs> from the coal. <laughs> Very interesting. So let's see, all right, so now, so you don't remember having to go outside to take a bath? No, 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 never. Okay. Second floor. Second floor, all right, because that was in the 1930s yeah. already, right? Okay. All right, so now you remember... Um, well, I'd you know, like to yes. say, I visited that house, that neighborhood, I never mm -hmm. went inside. I visited it last year, mm -hmm. and nobody could understand me because everybody spoke Spanish in the whole neighborhood. Oh, and the neighborhood changed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the house looked totally different, too. Mm, yeah, things yeah. don't, yeah. Yeah, never, the window never, was right. covered up and everything. You know, because it was basically a store, a tailor right. shop, Just with the old tailor sitting there at the sewing machine, and you could see through the window. You so, see the what do you, when you think, what do you, when you, what do you remember about your father as far as um, how he uh, dealt with his customers? How he dealt with his. I customers. mean, he was business. He was. He had a tailor store for yeah. for a, a long time. For how many years? Till he till he till he passed away. Yeah, yeah. He was many as did long he, as I, as long as I could remember. So he right. didn't. He didn't close his store before he passed away. He was still working. Do you recall? Yeah, he would get sick periodically. When did he? When did, how old was he when he passed away? He was, I think, seventy-one. Okay. Yeah, and he had severe emphysema. Mm -hmm. We ascribe that to the smoking of old gold cigarettes for many mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. and catching pneumonia and emphysema, and he was eventually on a breathing machine. Yeah. So, uh, do you remember uh, about uh, when customers would come in if you'd be in the store? Sure. Would he let you come in the store? So, would he ever help him do anything? Uh, a little bit. I would help him a lot. I really was a, wasn't of much use, mm -hmm. really. Uh, whenever I needed money, I would go to the box. Cigar box. The cigar box. Mm -hmm. And here he had scattered change. Mm -hmm. And if I was going down to the avenue, we lived in Tioga Heights, mm -hmm. which was just north of Kensington Avenue area, mm -hmm. and I'd go down to Kensington go to the five and dime mm -hmm. and or the drugstore down there and maybe have a hot dog or a drink never mm -hmm. both you can never afford both you either a hot dog or a drink mm -hmm. that's the way it was but as far as with the customers it was fine look we were jewish surrounded by a total gentile neighborhood and there was anti-semitism around but and really not good. The, the customers were fine. They were civil. My father used to uh, get a kick out of the young, attractive ladies that would come for a fitting for the tailoring and things like that, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, on the whole, he was quite a gentleman and a sweet person. And, and what do you remember about your mom? My mother? As far as she was a, she, I thought she was a wonderful mother. Um, what kind of things did, she, did you recall that she did? That Every day she talked to her daughters. She'd sit there on, on the telephone, and that was the most important thing in her life, talking to well, her. Well, you're son. living at home by yourself at this point, is that right? Well, Gloria was living in the house. She was only three years younger than me. Okay. So she was, she was around mm -hmm. uh, for a good portion of the time. But you're talking now, she's talking on the phone to... To Lillian and, and to Gertrude. Gertrude, basically. Right. Mm -hmm. Of course, Milton was away in the army or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so and Gloria was either at home or uh, subsequently she went to Europe and worked there and, and then she got married, yeah. Mm -hmm. But basically talking to Lillian and Gertrude on the telephone. What kind of things do you talk about? Tell you the truth, I wasn't listening. Okay. You know, but uh, ladies' things, mm -hmm. I guess. And now, as far uh, as of you... course, the weekends yeah. all revolved around the family. Mm -hmm. like... And usually we went to Gertrude's or Lillian's house mm -hmm. for a dinner. 
and uh, that was the uh, like on Sundays. Uh, on Sundays, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Saturdays too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when you get to see cousins, me. Cousin nephews, right? Nephews, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes nephews, Regina really. and Ted would yeah. come over. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, every once in a while, we'd see Molly and Max. Molly passed away at an earlier age when she was in the hospital. Uh, I think she had blood clot after surgery. Mm -hmm. She had blood clot to the lungs and died. This is your aunt? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think she had her gallbladder removed and mm -hmm. subsequently had a pulmonary embolus, I think. So as far as... Uh, and Charlie mm -hmm. and his wife Sylvia, they were in West Philadelphia. It would have been like the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a car. Well, how did you get to these We places? would take the G bus and then the elevated to 69th Street and then another bus or walk up 69th Street to where they lived. In West Philadelphia? Yeah, where now, how did you get to? Store. How did you get to Oxford Circle, for instance? Well, for instance, did you ever go to Camden to visit my mother and father in Camden? Because they yeah. lived there for five yeah. years. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. So you'd have to take the, uh, the, the ferry? Would you take, take the, the ferry? Take the ferry, Over yeah. the Delaware River? We used to, to go down to the seashore, we'd have to take this elevated to down to Market Street and then... The train. Then a ferry. Mm -hmm. And then the Reading, Spencer, the Seashore Line mm -hmm. to Atlantic City usually. And then how do you get to Wildwood? And yeah. Wildwood, by the time we were with Wildwood, I think uh, there was a car at our well, My father, it was 1946 yeah. that he uh, went, had his first hot dog stand. Uh-huh, right, right. I'll never forget, I was coming back from, was it 19? I was coming back from the shore. I thought it was Wildwood. I was on a bus mm -hmm. and people were standing there looking at the newspaper, something about a big bomb that they had exploded, mm -hmm. the atomic bomb. 1945. Yeah, it must have been so around you're 12 years old at this point? Yeah. No, right. you're, no you're nine coming years old. Back, coming nine back years from, old. I guess, Wildwood. So you must have been, you're coming back with your family. No, it was by myself. Well, this is I nine think. years, this is 1945, and you were born 1936? Yeah, yeah. So that's, you're nine years old? I think you're so. You're on the train by yourself? It was a, it was a bus. <laughs> a, it a was bus. a bus, yeah. And by myself, and you know, it was not unusual. Mm -hmm. I'd ride my bicycle uh, at young ages all over the mm -hmm. old neighborhood with all the traffic. So if you wanted to travel up to the to the Oxford Circle to see, uh, you know, uh, Gertrude, you'd, you'd, your family would take uh, buses. I guess, yeah, it was yeah. mostly buses. Because mm -hmm. you didn't have a car. No, but, the first car that I owned. Well, did your father ever drive? No. So your father and mother never drove? No, no. Okay. First car I owned, I bought when I was in medical school, I think it was. And, uh, I was I borrowed some money from your father, which I paid him back. And the according money, his will, the, you the still money that I earned is, was his from will. a diaper rash study yeah. I did during some summertime research. Wait, wait, you let yourself get diaper rash? No, no, no. We were <laughs> we would ex we would examine the infants. <laughs> and we used various concoctions on the diaper rash. Oh. And this study was sponsored by Descent, you uh -huh. know, that was used for diaper yes. rash. Uh -huh. And the final study of this, somehow we were never given another study to do because our final conclusion was that the babies did best without any ointment on. <laughs> I'll bet you they uh, just with air. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll bet you Destin and paid them to say that they should use this though. Uh huh. Right. It's right. still that way. I don't. Did know babies do better too. without the oil? My, my my career <laughs> was diverted from that point. And okay. uh, going into radiology, we had nothing much to do with diaper. So getting by your parents now, uh, your your sister, your older sisters are uh, two of your old sisters are already living away, and your brother. So, um, what do you remember about uh, the earliest 
Do you remember anything about any of your sisters getting married? Like, uh, do you remember? Uh, I remember Lillian? Lillian and Dave got married at a catering establishment. So you, I think it was called Yours on Broad Street. So you remember going a few to blocks the, south. You were there at the wedding. Yeah. What, do you remember anything? What do you remember about the wedding? Usually, I think my my sister Lillian sang a song at the wedding, uh, but I, I don't remember anything anything else really. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the whole family was there. Whole family was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Where did they go to live after that? After they got married? That's a good question. They may have lived with us originally mm -hmm. uh, on G Street. Was Lillian working then? Oh yeah, Lillian always worked. Where did she work? Lillian was she... a secretary, uh, almost like an accountant for some companies. Mm -hmm. She, uh, yeah, she always had a job. And Dave, where did he work? Dave worked uh, as a... Initially, when he was first got married. Yeah, I, mean, I well, originally, you know, they met in voice school. They both, w Lillian was always taking singing lessons. Mm -hmm. David came out of the army and he got a GI Bill mm -hmm. uh, situation and he used it to study the voice. And so they met at the voice uh, school there, and but he was he was a salesman for drug stores, for drug companies rather. Uh, I think that was that was uh, mm -hmm. what he did most. And then Lillian, did she and she tried to pursue a singing career? She tried. What did yeah, she, what did she try she, to do? What she was the, the lead soprano at the Temple, where professional soprano, where at the Temple, where she where. Uh, she worked. But what did she do as far as trying to uh, do something more on the way of, uh, you know, professional type of... Uh, she was, as I say, she was like a, a secretary, but an advanced secretary. I mean, as far as singing career. She tried uh, out for some operas and things like that, but she made a couple recordings. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't remember. Did she ever perform in any kind of... Of like she a did theatrical, uh, rarely, rarely she performed in mm -hmm. some theatrical stuff. Yeah. Okay. So I don't remember specifics. So now, now as far as uh, Gertrude and is concerned, do you remember where she met? Uh, how she met uh, my father, Abe? No, no, I was uh, pretty young at that time. Oh, actually, okay. uh, he. I think he was a teacher. Uh, I don't know where they met. Mm -hmm. To tell you the truth. How about how about the, how about uh, Milton? How did he meet the Charlotte? Hmm. He came out of the army. He met after he came. Yeah, he had a store at Sixtieth and Chancellor, a few blocks south of Market Street, mm -hmm. and uh, he owned this luncheonette. And I, I think he was in business with Dave and Lil, and. Charlotte lived in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and he got to know her, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they eventually got married. Uh, you remember going to that wedding? Vaguely, mm -hmm. vaguely, yeah. I, I must have been there. Where did they live? Uh, I think they lived in Westville. Oh, that's right. They lived in Westville. A few there. doors south of the of the business, or mm -hmm. maybe uh, maybe on top of the business. Mm -hmm. For a few years. And then he closed his business. They closed his business. And what did they he opened then? the business. This had been a very busy luncheonette. Mm -hmm. And there was a large movie theater right down the street. Mm -hmm. And the movie did very well. And then came television. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of everything, my brother bought the large luncheonette that depended on this movie for a lot of its, for a lot of its business. Mm -hmm. And uh, when TV came, the movie pretty much went bankrupt, mm -hmm. and so did my brother's business. What did he do then for employment? He, he subsequently went back in the service, mm -hmm. went back in the Air Force. Then he, was he living out of Philadelphia then? Yeah. For how long living did he do that? Of, they, they were living in Caribou, Maine mm -hmm. for a number of years, his, he and his family, mm -hmm. and then, uh, and then they moved back, the family moved back to Philadelphia, and he was in Europe. I don't think his family was with him in Europe, I may be wrong. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, outside of Paris, he was in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And uh, after over 30 years in the Air Force, he retired from so the So that's service. about 19, when, 60 something? I think so, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I have more exact dates, okay. but... Uh, okay, and, and as far as uh, Gl uh, Gloria, Gloria, uh, how did she meet uh, Joel? She, after she uh, finished high school, she, you know, nobody went to college. I was the first one in my family first child to go to college. And she was like secretary, U.S. government near Rittenhouse Square. She worked in one of the big buildings there for the government. And they asked her if she wanted to go to Germany. As my father would say when she left, my daughter is Eisgefangen in Deutschland. She's gone to Germany of all places. Anyway, in Germany of all places, she met this handsome soldier, so why Joel to to, Norton Smith, who why, was an American soldier. Why did she want to go to Germany? Because the U.S. government had a job for her there. Mm -hmm. Because this was after the war, and there was still a lot of government agencies still doing things. Uh, so she went to work, live by herself to, in Germany. Yeah. And she's right. how, approximately how old is she at this point? She must have been in her mid-20s mm -hmm. and uh, met Joel and, the, and they got married and lived there and then came back afterwards. So how long did they know each other before they got married? I don't know. Maybe a year. Mm -hmm. Maybe a They year. got married in Europe? Got married in Europe. So the best lady was, uh, oh, Gail. Gail was her first name, I forget her. She, Gail subsequently became very important with the Jewish Museum that subsequently opened up in Philadelphia mm -hmm. at Rittenhouse Square, at uh, Independence Square. So what, so you didn't, uh, not any, any members of the family go over during the wedding? For the wedding? No. How about her family? Her parents go there? Who's family? No, I'm, I'm just how about how about Joel's family? No, I don't think so. I, mm -hmm. There were a lot of people there, but they were friends that they mm -hmm. knew from in the service there. You know, you kind of hang together right. when you're in a foreign country with a foreign language. So, so how many years did they live there before they moved back? I think two, three years, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, and they had a great time. They traveled all over. Mm -hmm. They had a wonderful time. All right, so now you, now you're a young, youngest one, you're left at the home at this point, you're by yourself, you're the only child at this point? Yeah, for you're around three years. Uh, and so you went to, uh, you wanted to go to college, right? Yeah, so I was you went told to, where, it, where, I should go to college. So where did you go to high school? I went to Central High School. What class was that? The 201st class. And tell me about Central when you went there. Well. My parents were rather poor at that time because they lost money from my brother's store in West Philadelphia. And I knew the only way I could afford to go to college would be to win a scholarship. And being in Central was difficult to win a scholarship because it was a very academic college. You would, uh, see, yeah, you would, high see, you would think that you would have gone to a a local high school yeah. where you could be a shoe in for a scholarship. Right. You went to Ivy League to get a of scholarship. Of course, I think my parents <laughs> lost most a lot of their money mm -hmm. during the four years that I was in college in uh, in high school. Mm -hmm. Really, because that's when my brother oh, yeah. had the store, mm -hmm. and I used to help out on weekends and things like that. So anyway, fortunately, I did quite well in college in high school again mm -hmm. uh, because I worked hard and uh, I, I did very well. And then I was given a scholarship from the Board of Ed and I only applied to two colleges, University of Pennsylvania and Temple. I didn't know any better really or any worse. And uh, it turned out Temple would cost me nothing while Penn would cost me about half the usual tuition. 
because it was more expensive. So I decided to go to Temple because my parents, you know, we couldn't afford it. And how much was tuition in the Temple then? $400 a year. Mm -hmm. Temple uh, tuition at Penn was $800 a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you go on the Penn, you'd be living two floors up. Two floors up, <laughs> right, right. Well, then I went to, I always do things in twos. Okay. Then when I was finishing college, I was brainwashed that I should be a doctor. And what do you mean? Wait, you didn't take pre med? I kind of took pre med, but uh, that's okay. a, that was a general. I was actually going to be a physicist. Okay. Uh, that's what you like, right? I was a right? physics major. Mm -hmm. But, uh, like, I, so I applied to only two colleges. Well, medical school, well, I only applied to two medical schools Jefferson and Penn. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry, Temple and Jefferson, right. And Temple, I went for my interview and I was very sure I would get in because of my class ranking was very high. And uh, basically they asked me when I decided to become a doctor and I was a little, maybe a little snobbish and uh, I said, well, a couple months ago I decided, you know, I think this is for me. And, and very good, thank you. And then I got a nice letter th congratulating me on my achievements, but we had no room. Well, by that time I knew when I went to Jefferson for my other interview, to my other medical school, that I, I would tell them I always wanted to be a doctor. My parents had always been sick and I always wanted to help people. And with that, I got into Jefferson. So who influenced you to become a doctor? Basically my parents and my sisters and you, you know, told them you wanted I was told that Jewish boys they become doctors. You were told you wanted to be you told them you wanted to be a scientist, physicist. Physicist, yeah. And then what did they say when you said that? They said you work for a big company You'll be the last one hired and the first one let go. Because if, you were? Because you're Jewish. Because, because you're Jewish. Mm -hmm. uh, if you work for a university, it might be a, more of the same. Although well, chances are you wouldn't make a very good living. This is 1955? Uh, that's when you graduated in college? This was 1954 I graduated 54. in college. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there was a lot of feeling of anti-Semitism. Oh, yes. yes. You think Temple, it was, that was the reason why well, you... Well, Dean Parkinson was a well-known anti-Semite. At Temple. And he was the one that interviewed me. Mm -hmm. And I was so naive, I had no idea who he was or what to say. Mm -hmm. I was never really guided by anyone, tell mm -hmm. you the truth. Mm -hmm. My parents didn't know anything about this stuff. Mm -hmm. And my sisters and brother, they didn't know anything. And then nobody ever volunteered me for anything. Nobody. I remember if anybody were to take a class picture or whatever, you take your glasses off, you comb your hair, you do things, the basic things, you dress yourself nice. I didn't know about that. I left my glasses on, my hair would be messed up and so on. I had no guidance. Mm -hmm. But fortunately I didn't need it because I worked hard enough and I was bright enough that I could mm -hmm. achieve things. It was like when I went to medical school, I won a scholarship there too. You know, so never I never heard paid for college. They scholarships in medical for... school? That's, I, mean, they, I know they do that. That, that wasn't very common. It wasn't very common. But... You applied because of need? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, but they, the 